So in this project I'm going to do a graphic design uh, sort of illustration typography project and I pasted in a vector from Illustrator and I'm adjusting it and I'm um, going to go ahead and create a little bit of a background with a pattern like a, just a paper pattern that I created earlier I'm going to desaturate it a little bit so it's not so crazy and then also I'm going to create a solid color layer with a mask for my spray paint so I can edit this color at any time now in my mask right now it's showing up gray so I'm going to crunch it to make it black so it is completely opaque then opening up my layer styles I'm just going to blend it in the background a little bit using my blend stops just to pull a little bit of that background and then an inner glow that I made black to create sort of a, a fake shadow and uh, some layer transparency modes to blend it in a little bit a little bit of noise just to help break it up and make it not so perfect and then adjust the opacity just to blend it in a little bit more then I'm going to put on a bevel and a boss I tweak the bevel so it has a little bit of bump to it uh, just to give it some depth nothing too crazy it's very subtle um, and then I'm going to create a radial gradient to sort of fake a specular highlight and then dial that in with a layer transparency mode and then the opacity again so you can see we're starting to build up some layers here and uh, it's starting to look okay but uh, I'm going to kill my background layer do some renaming here and then group it I'm just going to call this spray for now I'm going to create a type layer and uh, I'm just going to use this where's the sauce because it's kind of what I ask when I'm working on my, a project and I'm always thinking like alright this is okay where's the sauce what can I do with it next how do I bring it to that next level so using my type tool I'm uh, going through and I'm editing the kerning and the leading kind of spacing it out properly so it appears correct and just adjusting the letters and kind of making them you know being a little bit of a perfectionist here and uh, spacing it out to make sure it fits and I'm turning the bounding box on an angle and kind of centering it in our spray paint and then go ahead doing a little bit more of adjusting, making it larger, just so it fits the space better. And uh, you know, so the spray paint isn't completely overwhelming everything. Now here I'm gonna build a pattern to add some more bumpiness into the spray paint. Because I'm gonna try and create a lighting effect with this. So I'm grabbing a pattern from my patterns in the layer style. I'm going ahead and create the layer so I sort of rasterize the pixels for that pattern and then running a blur on it so it makes sort of a texture like a lumpy texture and then I'm going to go ahead and blend that in a little bit with the opacity so it's uh, not so black and white So one thing I want to do here is add some lighting effects. So you go to Filter, Render, and you don't see lighting effects here. So one thing you have to do is exit out of Photoshop and run it in 32-bit mode. Because on the Mac, it runs in 64-bit mode. And so you have to go to your Photoshop CS5 executable, get the information, and then click the box that says open in 32-bit mode because Photoshop is open in 64-bit mode you don't always get all the options so you have to run this particular filter in 32-bit mode now there might be an update for that and you could jump back into Photoshop and run your lighting effects filter now in the lighting effects filter you can create spotlights and you can also move them around 
and you could adjust their properties. You have gloss and material and exposure, ambience, and all of them you could just drag around and uh, sort of play with them a little bit to get the result that you're looking for. You could change your focus. And then what I'm going to try to do what I'm going to try to do is create like a lumpy specular using this. And there we have it. So it's kind of lumpy, kind of looks like it could be the texture of paint, but then we're just going to go ahead and use our layer transparency modes and blend that in. So I did add, and now I'm adjusting the opacity, just so we can get it in a little bit of lump and um, create some texture there, sort of dial it in. Tweak it a little bit more, because you want to see it, you don't want it to be overpowering. And then I'm going to go ahead and go into my layer styles of my color fill. I'm going to blend my layer mask. Make some adjustments there. And on my type layer, I'm going to sort of treat the type layer to have a little bit of a drop shadow because um, I want it to be a little bit separate than the paint, so it stands out from the paint and still has a little bit of drop shadow, but you can't really do that all within the mask of our color layer, or our layer that has the, the pink in it. So I'm adjusting my inner shadow, the opacity, tweak it a little bit, give it a little bit of color so it's just not black try different color modes like darker color and uh, tweak the choke of it a little bit and the distance a lot of this comes down to just tweaking things and just until you you like it until you get it to where it looks right it looks like something that you're expecting to see and going from there so putting this on multiply and I group together my layer styles and my layer style transparency with my regular layer transparency to sort of blend them together. And I'm adjusting my saturation a little bit more, to sort of warm it up, and dialing my layers to sort of control the contrast because the the uh, our type is a little bit lost. So I'm trying to create more contrast using opacity and my layer styles while also keeping within the style of the uh, illustration and um, our layers. Now that's getting pretty close. I'm going to crop this. I think I'm pretty satisfied with the, the look of the base layer and then it's, it's still missing something to me. Like I look at this and I'm like, needs more sauce. So where's the sauce? We're going to add some here. Let me crop this, get it to where it's a little bit more balanced. And then I'm going to create a little bit of vignette around the background just so it's not flat. Um, and it's got a little bit of depth to it. Nothing crazy. By creating a gradient, that's like adjustment layer, create a gradient, use a radial gradient and dial it in. Adjust my colors and my falloffs of my stops. Black and white gradient. And kind of just dial it in from there. Just massage it in. Then again, use opacity to blend things together and sort of, you know, control how that stuff is playing together. So I made a quick linear gradient and uh, I'm using this to make sort of a faux reflection and I'm going to convert this layer to a smart object so I can go ahead and put a smart filter on it because I need to see the filter applied to this with the transparency. Now when I put distort and glass on this I can quickly see that I can't see what I'm dialing here. It's just all transparent with some very subtle pixels. So I'm going to quickly put a solid color in my smart object so I can see it. There you go. Pops up right there. I'm going to save that and jump back into my filter. Now I could dial my glass, and now we have our final here, and we've got a reflection that we've added with a little bit of glass distortion on it. 
we have a paint spec we added in a little bit of a drop shadow there just to help push it and then we got our overall paint group and then we have our color and you can see not that many layers it's very simple and a couple compositing tricks that were thrown in to get some effects um, but for the most part it's just layer styles lighting effect and type